welcome to another episode of How to Make Your Wedding Not Suck. My name is Dan, and I'm here today with two wedding planners from Something Blue Weddings and Events. I'm here with Lauren and Tara. Welcome to the show. I'm so glad to, to have you guys here. Thanks. Um, hey, thanks for having us. And I'm honest, like, I really love talking with wedding planners because uh, unlike uh, most vendors, you know, they're very specific, sort of one role in the day or, or at most two, um, you've seen it all, right? Like oh, you've yeah. seen, <laughs> you've seen everything. And so I'm very curious to hear your perspectives on, on weddings. And I'm sure there's many, many things that, that, that people do to make their weddings suck when they don't have to. So uh, I'm curious to hear your thoughts. So if, is there anything that jumps out of you right away that, um, that you see sort of mistakes that, that brides make when they, when they come and start planning their wedding? What, what kind of mistakes do you see most frequently? Yeah, I think the biggest thing right from the start is having a r unrealistic budget. I mean, mm. they want to plan, you know, this ballroom center city wedding that normally costs 60 grand and up and they have a $10,000 budget. Right. So, um, you know, and oftentimes picking vendors because they're the most inexpensive vendor, mm. whereas often they don't really fit their style. They don't mm. really fit what they're looking for. So mm. you're going to have, you're not going to have that connection that you should with your vendors. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. I think along with the lens of vendors, it's just, you know, the cheapest option is not always the best. And yeah. having those conversations with the vendors, what you're looking for. Um, and again, they they might be a little bit more expensive, but then adjusting your budget accordingly because of really focusing on what are those important aspects that, you know, you love flowers. So mm. you're going to maybe spend a little bit more money on those flowers and, you know, maybe say the DJ is not, you know, you're really not into music. So you're kind right. of maybe scaling back on that budget okay. um, aspect of it. So it's, it's, again, just kind of being realistic in the budget, but also kind of being able to kind of flex a little bit here and there. Okay, gotcha. So is that, now is that something you kind of work with the, the bride and groom up front and gauge like what is important to you? Like how do, how do you even figure that out when you're making suggestions to how to make their wedding not suck. Absolutely. I mean, usually we just say, you know, jot down like the first five things are most important. Okay. You know, is it the food that you really care about? Like what, you know, when you think of your wedding, what do you think about most? Okay. Um, do you think about, you know, a five-piece band or do you think about, you know, this really awesome DJ that plays club music or, you know, like yeah. what do you want? Okay, priorities um, basically. Exactly. Just, yeah. uh, and then assigning that to the budget. So, mm -hmm. um, and then from there, do you help uh, kind of make suggestions? of like, okay, you've told me that a DJ is a really big deal, the music section. And then you say, well, okay, this is the best DJ. Like you're, you're gonna wanna spend a little bit more, but you're gonna get a better. How, like, how does that usually work? Like, how do you convert it from a priority list into real guidance and, and suggestions? So most often we'll do like a budget breakdown. Um, okay. We tend to know what things cost, whereas the bride and groom won't. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, this is the first time they're planning their wedding. So, I mean, a lot of times they get sticker shock because they're like, oh, I didn't realize it cost <laughs> right. that much, you know? Yeah. Um, and I think more so explaining why things actually cost as much as they do. Mm. Um, you know, we're, even though it's just us two, I mean, we still have, you know, many other things, you know, we have to, this is our income, you mm. know what I mean? So understanding why it costs, you know, X amount versus, you know, some other larger companies right. or, or whatnot too, so. So what kind of options then does a, uh, does a couple have when they first come to you? Is there's like, um, with any wedding planner really, is there a um, sort of entire package where, they, where you help from start to finish or just day of services? How does that usually work? So it really ranges. Um, we offer three base packages. We okay. do full service, partial planning, and then day of coordination. Um, if you know, not every single bride needs full service. Mm -hmm. You know, they are fine calling vendors, and you know, they have fun with it. Yeah. Whereas some people might be like, I don't have time for that. <laughs> My job doesn't allow for that. You know, I'm in school, whatnot. So, um, and then you know, partial is just kind of you know helping as much as they want and we can do custom packages so hmm. you know just if whenever you need help through the planning process okay. uh, you know we're just an email away you know type of things gotcha so, sort um, of an a la carte consultant sort right. of a thing mm -hmm. absolutely okay yeah. that mm -hmm. sounds really interesting because there's there's probably everybody's got a different sort of starting point you know like with uh, some brides might have go into it knowing i know my photographer or i know my dj or i know I know exactly where I want to have, and then others probably need more more guidance. Absolutely. So it sounds like sure. that a big part of finding the right wedding planner is making sure that they can accommodate um, the level of uh, service that you need. It's not mm -hmm. all or nothing. It can be kind of right. whatever you need. Mm -hmm. So yeah. uh, now I have a question for you about uh, something I've seen a lot of. Uh, <laughs> as a photographer, like I'll get a picture that a bride found on Pinterest. Oh, Pinterest. Um, <laughs> 
better or for worse, Pinterest is a big deal. And Pinterest tends to be like the DIY hub, you know. Uh, so what have you seen with, with Pinterest and, and zooming out farther, like for a, a do-it-yourself bride, is it possible to have a wedding that's mostly DIY but yet also uh, aided by a you know wedding planning company like yourselves, or uh, is that something that that means pretty much doing everything yourself? Is, or is it more important? Like, where, where, what are your mm -hmm. thoughts on that? So, I mean, I love Pinterest, <laughs> and I think pretty much everyone does. Um, when a bride first gets engaged, they're on Pinterest. They're looking mm -hmm. for their dress. They're looking for you know flowers and whatnot. So, um, a lot of times we feel like brides really use Pinterest incorrectly. So they'll mm. find, you know, they'll pin, you know, all these pictures and all of a sudden they have 200 pins and they're all different styles. So right. they don't really know what they want to do. Yeah. Um, you know, once they get to meeting with their vendors, they have no clue what their actual style is and they're scrambling to, you know, make a decision really quick. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and also the biggest thing, Pinterest doesn't have price tags. So, uh. um, I mean, it could be really anything. It could be the dress. It could be, you know, this tablescape that you found. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that took four hours to set up. It cost 10 grand. And you just, <laughs> you don't know because, yeah. you know. Um, so I think really just finding like bits and pieces of what you like, you mm. know, on, on Pinterest okay. um, is a good idea. But um, not really, don't overuse it. You know, right. once you've decided, stop. Right. Stay off yeah. Pinterest and okay. don't worry about it. So because I find it really easily that you get you just get overload. It's like sensory overload of, right. of these beautiful photos yeah. and beautiful scapes of everything and setups and and like Lauren said, it's just you get overwhelmed. It's it's once you pick your venue, just don't look at any more venues. I mean, mm. we move on to the dress or move on to flowers and certain things like that. That okay. yeah. you know, so you can just be happy with the decisions that you've made and don't second guess yourself. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. So as, as we kind of work through the wedding day, like you have getting ready and then, uh, and then usually there's something before that ceremony time. And this is an area of the day that I've seen, I don't know if mistake is the right word, but I've seen a lot of variation on th where things can kind of change direction a lot um, before the ceremony. So I'm curious to hear your thoughts on a first look because this is a big deal for myself as a photographer. Um, if people come to me and say, our priority is the memories that we're going to have as documented through photo and cinema, I almost always recommend having a first look to buy us a lot more time. They can get the most value for their dollar out of me by having that sort of window in the day. But then others say, that is important, but at the same time, I want to balance it with my priority of um, you know, being traditional. And so... I want him to see me for the first time coming down the aisle or something like that. And so what are your thoughts on, on a first look and how have you seen it uh, influence the wedding day and, and the overall flow and experience for the bride and groom themselves? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think a first look um, from a timing perspective mm -hmm. and a planning perspective is amazing. Mm -hmm. It's one of the best things, you know, for us because, you know, you just get it out of the way, get your pictures and everyone can just relax versus being so stressed out at that moment that <laughs> yeah. you're going to walk down the aisle. Right. <laughs> yeah. um, I mean, definitely from my perspective, from experience, you know, I, I wish I would have done a first look, you know, time wise and mm. also just, you know, nerves. I mean, you some brides don't feel it until that second they're about to walk down the aisle. Whereas if you get do that first look, you know, it's it's just you two. You remember what it's really about. Mm. So, you know, it does helps a lot. So tell me more about that moment for you. When you're, when you, when you saw him for the first time, you did, you did walk, it, your first time seeing him on the wedding day was walking down the yes. aisle. And so it was this sort of like overwhelm. What was that? Yes, it was very overwhelming. <laughs> and the whole morning, everyone was like, oh, you're so calm. I'm like, yeah, you know, I know that I'm walking down the aisle, you know, mm -hmm. to my future husband. It's not a big deal. We know each other. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, you know, still sitting in the limo, I was fine. I mm. got out and I was about to walk down with my dad and I just lost it. And even during <laughs> the actual ceremony, it was just like, you know, the, the priest was like, calm down. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <I'm> right. <trying. laughs> mm -hmm. so. well, like, right. I think then too is just, you're obviously going to spend the rest of your life with this, this person and to not be able to talk to them, to not be able to just yeah. take a breath and have that moment right. um, is really difficult too. It just to be able to have that first look, get it out of the way, have that moment of just, okay, how was your morning? My morning was crazy. Just to kind of like right. check in. Yes, it yeah. is your wedding day, but to still just take a breath and enjoy the five seconds or the 10 minutes of whatever that moment is, okay. is awesome. So did you do a first look? Uh, we did. You yes. did do a first look. We did do a first it look in mine. And it was, it was, again, just, 
an awesome, I think I was more excited about that than, than after that, it's kind of like, oh, everything's good. So it sounds like you both, the first time you saw him, it was, it was still a big moment. Absolutely. It was just a matter of the context. Mm -hmm. And so, it, yeah, it sounds like that's a decision that has to be made of like, do we want it to be in that, in that context of, you know, of everybody's here? Uh, and I think one of the biggest concerns I've heard for brides that are, are considering a first look is, you know, that worry of it's not going to be special or it's not, was that still special for you to see him in that first look? Absolutely. You know? I think it was. And and what I did a little differently too was just, I didn't wear my veil when okay. I did, had to do my first look, but I wore my veil going down the aisle. Ah, okay. So it's still, it was still yeah. that sense of kind of like, all right, this is the next step. The first look was great. It had that, our special moment and then mm. they got the veil on. So it still had that just different sense of that moment. Right. So even if you still, you still saw him by the time you got down the aisle, like you're, that wasn't your first time seeing him for the day, but it was the first time seeing him in the context of everyone, you know, being there. Right. Absolutely. Like, so that's still a special moment. They're just two different, mm -hmm. honestly, they're two different moments. It's not the same, not the same thing at all. So mm -hmm. that's really interesting. It gives a lot, I think it gives people a lot to think about it's sure. just to yeah. kind of digest. So on a, time. and yeah. you said on a logistical <laughs> level like that, that time, what kind of, like, what amount of time are we talking about that that opens up? Because, like, if you have the ceremony and it starts at, uh, you know, say, 4 o'clock or something like that, you know that you can't do a whole number of things before then. But if you have that first look beforehand, like, how much time are we talking as far as, like, space throughout the day? Cool. Yeah. So, I mean, I think the biggest thing is just figuring out how much time you have between your ceremony and your reception. Mm -hmm. If you only have an hour, I mean, realistically, you can't do your formal photos and, you know, family photos and your wedding party. So, and it's more stressful because you're trying to make sure you can rally everyone together and, mm -hmm. you know, get out of the, you know, church or, you know, wherever your ceremony is being held, get out there on time. I mean, as much as we hope that the timeline is on time, mm -hmm. there's always something that comes up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, whether it's the hair isn't right or you need to fix your lipstick or, or whatnot. So right. it just, mm -hmm. it's, it's great. Yeah. <laughs> and then let alone, I mean, that's just if you're going to do it at your church or your, where you're getting your ceremony. If you want to go to a different location, then yeah. that throws in a whole other curveball of oh, logistics, yeah. timing, movement. Because people yeah. just loading on and off the bus. I mean, you're talking 10 minutes depending right. on dress size and bridal party size. Yeah, yeah. So... Yeah, yeah, but that time adds up really, yes. really yeah. quickly. Those, those minutes here and there go by so quickly. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, and personally, I've seen this on, on a, uh, you know, in a very real way because uh, you have this, this amount of time that, it, like you said, you're, you're, you're stuck between the ceremony and the reception. Like, that is a fixed amount of time. You can't push that back because there's food involved and all right. this stuff. Whereas if you, if you open it up and you do your first look, you can have the first look an hour before you can do it five hours before. I shot mm -hmm. a wedding in Florida recently and it was, um, they just were so into pictures and the environment. We wanted to travel around and take pictures. So we wound up doing it, I think, five hours before mm -hmm. the ceremony and wow. it just opens up so much, so much mm -hmm. time mm -hmm. uh, to really get the most out of the other vendors and the, the things that you've yeah. allocated in the wedding day. So that's, that's yeah, really interesting. I think interesting. so too is a lot of mine recently have had done the first look and then have actually been able to enjoy their cocktail hour. So right. they come in and they're yes. kind of just like, all right, make yeah. this grand entrance into the cocktail hour and just have a great time and not feeling like they've been secluded and, you know, away taking pictures that whole time. So they can come in and see what they've more they've been working they've so been working hard on, right. Yeah, on exactly. right then and there as well. So I'm glad you said that because you touched on not just the guest experience, but also the experience for the bride and groom. Uh, they're both important on the wedding day. So during a ceremony, um, one of the things that I've seen, and we've talked about this in some of the other interviews, but um, is this idea of an unplugged wedding because we're just mm -hmm. so, we, we spend our lives behind a screen now. Yeah. Like, and so uh, to come to a ceremony, I would think from one of the most disappointing things would be as a bride and groom, look out and see your, everybody you love and care about not looking at you, not experiencing, not being present, but looking on Twitter or whatever, <laughs> you know, whatever they're doing. Um, what are your thoughts on this, this, this idea of an unplugged ceremony and how would you guide somebody to, to even execute on that? Yeah, I mean, the best way to really tell guests that you want an unplugged ceremony is have a sign. I mean, mm. if you just tell people you don't want, you know, to see the iPad in the middle of the ceremony. Oh, so this isn't, you know? this isn't distracting <laughs> no, you? No, not at all. Like, not at all. <laughs> I mean, they're looking at the iPad versus YouTube, and, you know, right. it's... Um, I think I, anybody that takes a picture with an iPad 
in a wedding ceremony should immediately just be shot. Right. Just, <laughs> yeah. We should just have a rule, just a standard. Yeah, it is funny. And then they're all scrambling for um, finding an outlet. Oh, my phone's dying yeah. here oh, at the end yeah, of the yeah. evening, yes. a, a littered around the reception spaces, like people's like plugs <laughs> in their yeah. phones, and you're just like tripping over them. Right. And I can't yeah. tell you how many times people have left behind. And uh, yeah. it's right. just, it's crazy. Yeah. So again, just getting back to enjoying that first look moment, you're still enjoying that moment for... Right. For your guests, for you know, the, for the bride and groom, then too, just to be present. Uh -huh. Yeah, being present—that's that's such a key. <laughs> that's such a critical part. It seems so simple, and that's the whole point. I, sure. like, I guess that's the thing that that sticks out is like this is the reason why we're doing the wedding in the first place, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the reason you're inviting guests, which seems like the thing that's hard to cut down for so many people. You know, it's like we <laughs> have this gigantic guest list, and then people are coming and not being present anyway. It's right. like, we just spent so mm -hmm. much money. Right. Mm -hmm. We could have been on an epic honeymoon if we hadn't invited <laughs> a guest that wind up spending their time on uh -huh. the phone yes. the whole time. So Right. Just then, too, just of probably this is one of the only times in your lives you're going to have all of these family and friends and guests, and, and just to be able to kind of revel in that, too, because you're not probably going to get this moment ever again. Mm -hmm. huh? Right. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about traditions and sort of uh, how to balance this pressure from family or friends or Pinterest or, you know, whatever, <laughs> of like this need to, to, to follow some traditions or, or lots of traditions. Or at the same time, some people feel the need to like, I have to have a different wedding or right. you know, it's got to be different and unique and I want different, different. How do you, what kind of guidance would you give to people with this, just balancing this concept of tradition in a wedding? Yeah, I mean, I think, so as soon as you get engaged, I mean, and you start planning, you pick a date, I mean, your family is going to be just pushing their ideas, their opinions, <laughs> yeah. and it can be good, and some of them you're going to be like, I don't want to hear this, but, you know, sometimes you just have to listen and appreciate the advice mm -hmm. and, you know, take it lightly, but, you know, at the end of the day, just be true to what you guys want to do. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think it's just again, like Lauren said, like listen, but really hear. You know, if if the you know your mom, your, the bride's mom is really pushing for, say, using a, a veil or some a necklace or some sort of jewelry, maybe use them, incorporate them into a different aspect. We have them at the mm. shower, do something at um, your rehearsal dinner. So it's just certain yeah. things like that that are. There's a ton of different stuff that is going to go on for this year, year and a half, whatever engagement <laughs> right. that you can wear these special things too. Yeah. Um, that you're still incorporating those family traditions, but still kind of doing it your own way. Gotcha. Yeah. So it, it seems, sounds like it comes down to really asking why you're doing that traditional thing. Sure, if absolutely. It's just, if it's just doing it because you feel like you're supposed to or... Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, so do you have people like uh, that feel a reluctancy to sort of break the rules and do something different? Like what would you say to somebody that's sort of feeling that, that pressure that wants to do their own their own thing, but they're kind of struggling up against uh, those those pressures. Any advice for like how to navigate that? That's such a tricky. Sure. That's a tricky place to be. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it definitely is. I mean, it, it all comes back to just you have to really figure out what you want to do. Mm. Um, you know, sometimes. It, when it comes to traditions, if you don't want to cut the cake, there's no rule book that says you have to cut the cake. Mm. Um, you don't even have to have a cake. I mean, we've had plenty of times where we don't have a cake, we don't have, you know, we don't do the garter bouquet toss. I mean, for us right now, like, that's a rarity that we even see that at a mm. wedding, mm -hmm. um, which is mm -hmm. interesting because yeah. when you think of a wedding, you're like, oh, they're going to toss the bouquet or they're going to do this. Right, and it's almost like, yeah. yeah. I, don't know, I, don't um, I don't think people miss it, though. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because it's just one thing after another. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Mm -hmm. I think it's worth questioning, like, do I, do I need this and why? Mm -hmm, right. um, because it's sometimes I think, yeah, you feel like this is how weddings should work and we'll deviate from that rather mm -hmm. than just starting from nothing and working your way up to, these are the things I want, we're just going to do those and that's it. So mm -hmm. that's cool that you kind of um, are able to affirm, you know, it's outside the box elements if they, if they have meaning and significance um, right. towards a wedding. So um, now at the, I think... I would love to close with something that uh, nobody loves really talking about it, but um, <laughs> this idea of like, what if? There's a lot of what ifs, <laughs> and I think your experience is like you've probably you've seen you've done hundreds of weddings, so at, at, as you've been able to witness all this from a sort of thirty thousand foot view, <laughs> you can objectively probably identify certain certain things that go wrong at weddings that probably could have been avoided sure. uh, if mm -hmm. a proper planning or whatever had gone. So what are some of those things that you see 
uh, that really have the potential to sort of uproot an entire you know year of, of planning, uh, but could be avoided easily. Any wedding day sort of disasters that you would uh, that you'd be able to guide people away from. But we're not going to tell any horror stories because <laughs> okay. we've had those. But yeah. I mean, as much as we hope all weddings are perfect, it just that does not happen. Um, you know, yeah, it's not realistic. It's yeah. not realistic. It's not yeah. between the people that are in the mother nature is the biggest one that it's just Weather. life is yes. is unpredictable. Yeah, so yeah. Mm -hmm, you yeah. have okay. to you have to plan. Yeah, yeah. I think you should definitely. Um, you, some people don't think about a plan B. Mm. Um, you know, they have this vision. They want to get married outside. Mm -hmm. You know, it could be. You know. Your fingers are crossed that you're having a beautiful day, but yeah. if you don't have a good backup plan, mm -hmm. you don't want all of your guests sitting outside in the rain or, you know, <laughs> right. if it's a hurricane, like you have to have some sort of plan. Yeah. Otherwise, I mean, that's just going to, that's going to ruin any good plans Absolutely. that you even made. Yeah, <laughs> mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that's so true. And so this is not what you're talking about, but it's interesting uh, to me how once I start thinking through that lens, if, if I was... Uh, planning an event at a certain location, and I chose the location because it was outside, and because it was so beautiful, and yet I would not be okay with that venue if I had to do it inside. Right. That would make me question, like, is Absolutely. this really where I want to mm -hmm. right. have it? Because mm -hmm. it's a very real possibility that it actually might happen. Um, and I also think putting, being self-aware of where you're putting value in the wedding is important. If it's like, I only want to have a wedding at this location, um, the uncomfortable truth would be like, Make sure you would get married, period. Like, regardless of all the stuff, you know what I mean? Like, we're all here to help make that day awesome. But, like, if you wouldn't be doing it if you didn't have the, you know, the, um, all the different elements, I think that's, that's worthwhile, right? Like, yeah. to, to, to just kind of double check that, that relationship. So, um, is there anything that you'd say, like, to kind of make sure uh, that that relationship, not just a relationship between uh, a bride and groom and their vendors or their wedding planners, but, like, between themselves, like throughout that time, any thoughts on like how to make sure that that's still solid, like yeah, throughout I this mean, process? You have to remember why you're actually doing this, and I yeah. feel like sometimes people get caught up in the small details, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that'll start. You know, you'll have a fight, and it's not a good thing. You yeah. know, if if you feel yourselves getting stressed out, take a break. It's mm. not a big deal. I mean, you don't have to spend every single weekend you know, going to meet with all of your vendors mm. and you know talking with your family. Pick one day do wedding stuff, and then, you know, the other day, just have fun. I mean, mm -hmm. this is supposed to mm -hmm. be enjoyable. You're engaged. You're never going to be engaged again, right. <laughs> you yeah. know? Yeah. So, um, you know, it's the whole start of your life together. So <laughs> you don't want to start it off on the wrong foot because right. it yeah. just, it, it's going to escalate from there and, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah, take breaks, do date nights. I yes. mean, it's still you still live your mm. life that yes, you it is going to be a very crazy and stressful year plus however long again you're engaged, but yeah. to again, you're going to have a lot of those inputs wanting people to have these traditions and incorporate that. So, you don't want to be necessarily just having you know, relationships with you and your future husband on the rocks, but just parents, it, it's a lot of stress oh, yes. and and money and who we invite who. So, it's just making sure you kind of are cognizant to that that there's a lot of other people that it's it's yes it is you and your future husband getting married or future partner mm -hmm. um but it is there's there's a lot of relationships that you're just starting that you're wanting to kind of incorporate for the rest of your life too that really makes sure it's a good foundation right things can get intense with your new you know your future in-laws and whatnot right. or your future you know brother and sister-in-law yeah. and whatnot mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. you don't want to you know start that off bad too because i mean <laughs> once you're in you're in and <laughs> <laughs> so. that's so true yeah, see some bad with the in-laws right, right. <laughs> <laughs> wow this has been awesome so lauren tara thank you so much for coming on the show it's such sure, a pleasure definitely. having you so to check out more about lauren and tara and what they do um, check out somethingbluewed.com. That's something, B L U WED, W E D.com. And of course, check out the complete library and gallery of uh, wedding tips and uh, tricks for how to make your wedding not suck at dazzlephotography.com/tips. Thanks so much, and we'll see you soon.